Hi everyone, in this video I'll be covering the key mechanics behind the Trial of Darkness Lufenia stage which is the Lufenia stage where Zande debuts and as per my usual mechanics videos I will be running through some of the key things uh, I think you should be watching out for and preparing for to give you a much easier time in the stage and I will also be covering some key characters and sample party compositions. As always, I'll be including a timestamp in the video description that you can use to skip ahead to the section that you are interested in. So let's get started. Firstly, this fight has two waves. The first wave is pretty insignificant. It's a single Ochu with two micro Ochu minions. And the first wave is pretty harmless. Uh, they are more an annoyance than a real danger. So the big Ochu in the middle and its minions can land a poison debuff on your party. And the main Ochu in the middle will also revive the micro Ochus when they die. So your focus on the first wave to try to reduce the turn count as much as possible is to focus damage on the main Ochu in the middle. The micro Ochus doesn't have that many HP so they tend to die very quickly just from splash damage alone. And the first wave will end when the main Ochu in the middle dies regardless whether or not any micro Ochu are left alive by the end of the first wave. The real challenge of course comes on the second wave which consists a pair of assault dogs and you have to take note that the assault dogs are heavily resistant to the ice, water, wind and holy elements so characters that uh, use those elements are more or less locked out from this battle because their DPS will be significantly reduced. Otherwise, the assault dogs do not have other resistances and does not have any other immunities. So as always, as with all Lufania fights, there are a few things that you need to watch out for. First and foremost, of course, would be the Lufania orb and the usual trend uh, as if all Lufania orbs is that you cannot let it count down to zero. Essentially, when the orb expires, it's an instant game over because the Flamethrower plus plus active, uh, ability sets all your entire party's HP to zero, bypassing any form of uh, HP mitigation. The orb can only be increased in counter by uh, doing dark type damage, which is actually still quite rare at this stage of the game. And you do need to have some form or way uh, to deal dark type damage. If you really lack dark type characters, it is technically possible to burst down the bosses before the orb expires, and I'll cover more into that later. Alright, so starting off at the fight on wave 2, immediately the Lufania orb will be present at the 100% uh, HP mark. And the orb will only disappear once each assault dog hits 79% HP. So in essence, you need to actually reduce the bosses from 100% to 79% before the orb expires. And of course, if you have dark type um, attacks, it makes the job much easier because each dark type attack will increase the orb counter by 2. The first phase here is very similar to the one that you face during Sephiroth's Lufenia with the uh, Heretic Imps. Uh, where they also start off with a count of 20 and the orb persists until they hit 79%. So the so-called first phase here 
it's possible for you to actually get by without any dark type attacks so long as you incorporate very heavy heaters such as lightning or cloud you can technically get the bosses down to 79% and let the orbs expire then uh, sorry and let the orbs disappear then okay. now uh, the moment a single assault dog hits 79% as you can see here the Lufania orb will disappear on that dog however uh, you need both dogs hitting 79% because as you can see here uh, on the boss A the Lufania orb is still present because the dog is still above 80% HP once you do hit 79% health and the orb disappears you enter so called phase 2 of the fight where you have a window of time where no Lufania orb is present and from 79% down to 59% uh, you don't have to deal with the Lufania orb which means that you can try to be somewhat conservative in your key ability users and just deal slow and steady DPS uh, across both bosses and it is recommended to try to at least even out the HP so that you uh, enter uh, certain HP thresholds at roughly the same time for both bosses. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, once a single attack dog hits 59% or below, as you can see here, the Lufania Orb uh, will uh, appear again, and it will appear again at a count of 20, uh, similar to the start, but this time it will never go away. So essentially, you have to bring the dog down from 60% to 0 with an orb count of only 20. Now if you bring dark type attacks again, you can increase the orb counter. And of course, uh, using characters such as Zande, which can enchant your entire party with dark element really bypasses this. So Zande, if you do have him, uh, is a really key character for this fight. But I have to also stress that it is very possible to complete the fight without the use of Zande. In fact, I have a video where I used the VV instead of Zande and got through the fight just fine. It is also possible if you use Diabolo Summon and you have strong characters with their burst weapons such as Cloud or Lightning to actually bring down the bosses from 59% to 0 without the use of a dark type attacker and the way you go about it is to um, focus damage down the boss and once the Lufania orb is low you pop the Diabolo summon so that you can increase the orb counter during summon and once Diabolo's summon is over you then pop your burst mode and hopefully um, all those turns are sufficient for you to kill off uh, the bosses The second mechanic that you really need to watch out for and prepare accordingly is the so-called fire dog stance and the game will actually tell you when they enter this stance the, there will be a message prompt saying fire dog and you actually see the assault dogs uh, surrounding themselves in a veil of fire 
and they will also get some sort of yellowish uh, streaky aura appearing uh, so visually uh, it's very obvious when they are in the fire dog stance when they are in this stance they gain a brave shield and at the start of the fight the brave shield is about close to 40,000 bravery and um, as you go along the fight uh, because they increase their stats the brave shield increases uh, and when they are in the red HP zone the brave shield can be as much as 60 to 70,000 HP notably also when one dog dies the remaining dog will also enter the fire dog st stance with an 80k brave shield now when they enter this stance and the brave shield is up the brave shield comes in the form of an aura so it cannot be dispelled or stolen and the only way to get rid of it is to break through the entire bravery amount using strong brave shaving attacks and you really need to do this because uh, while the brave shield is up they have a 100% HP damage reduction aura present as well and if you if they manage to get a turn while they are still having the brave shield up they will use the flamethrower plus attack which is essentially here which is essentially almost a game over as well so flamethrower plus will dispel all debuffs they have on them so characters such as a uh, Reno's pyramid wouldn't work here and it's a self battery into AoE attack on your party twice with the second hit being a 100% HP splash so under normal circumstances you won't be able to survive this and because it is 2 hits it bypasses last 10 passives and it's also a guaranteed hit on the second 100% HP splash so evasion or blindness wouldn't work as well there are still ways to mitigate this because Flame Trover Plus doesn't dispel your party's buffs, so any buffs that mitigate HP damage can actually protect you from Flame Trover Plus. And I guess the best example of this is Beatrix with her Holy Knight protection, because uh, especially because Beatrix is also a synergy character uh, in this event. If you don't have Beatrix there's not many other attacks that uh, or buffs that can protect you Gladiolus's LD buff does protect him from this attack however the rest of your party will still face the full force of the attack and will likely die from this so the best way to get around flame Trover plus is to really just break through their brave shield when they're in a fire dog stance if you manage to break them before they get their next turn they will not be using flame Trover plus but will instead just be using flame the regular flame Trover ability which is really just a standard group aoe brave and hp attack which is very easily survivable okay so this is an example of the flame Trover plus you can see my party took like tons of damage um, and essentially uh, it's going to kill off any party member that's not protected by some sort of buff that mitigates HP damage so really you don't want the boss to ever use uh, Flame Trover Plus unless you are incorporating Beatrix into your party strategy the other thing that deserves special mention here is the final shield so as I mentioned earlier when one dog dies the other remaining dog will gain a, the fire dog stance Normally when they go into fire dog stance, they will self-delay themselves by a couple of turns uh, and the purpose of that is to actually allow you the some additional turns to break through the shield which is nice However, the exception to this is the final shield here when one dog dies The remaining dog gains the shield and it won't actually self-delay its turns making this a very difficult shield to break in addition to it being 80,000 uh, bravery points in in power so you the best way to get around the final shield of course is if you can somehow time the attack and kill them off at the same turn or the same attack that way you can bypass the re remaining dog enraging 
the other option is to incorporate either your burst mode attack, your summon mode, or perhaps uh, some sort of turn deletion or delay such as uh, um, lightning or immediate lion. Take note though that while they are in the fire dog stance, they are immune to delay except delays that is tied to breaks. So characters that do insta breaks or re breaks will still work to delay. And of course, a turn deletion with immediate lion will still work here uh, to buy you the additional turns to break through the shield. The third thing that I want to mention is that the bosses on the second wave here, the assault dogs, they are quite aggressive in terms of HP attacks. So they frequently use the regular flamethrower ability. And while by itself it's not particularly dangerous, just because they, of the sheer number of times that they spam this attack, they can quickly whittle down your party's HP. In addition, uh, when they surround themselves in the fire aura, uh, they tend to retain the fire aura for roughly 2 turns even after their shield is dispelled. And while they have the fire surrounding them, uh, they tend to be uh, more likely to use HP attacks in the state. So there will be a period of time where you find yourself eating uh, HP attacks back to back. So the best way to get around this uh, hyper aggressiveness is to incorporate characters that have strong healing in their kit or characters that bring about um, very strong HP regen abilities to counteract the HP damage loss that you have. And of course, uh, Gladiolus is a very good example here because he mitigates HP damage and he provides a 20% HP regen buff to your party. Gao is another good example, particularly also because Gao synergizes very well with Sunday here. And Gao's counters can also uh, provide healing to your party every time the bosses do an HP attack. Thirdly, uh, Root is also another good example because he has very strong healing built into his kit. Uh, and you can essentially battery your entire party as well so that you can tank the regular flamethrower attack. So coming to key members or party members and strategy, uh, I've actually completed this fight using a few different strategies already and you can check out some of my other battle videos uh, to get a sense of um, some strategies that will work. First and foremost, the easiest way to get around this battle is to actually just incorporate a uh, turn deletion strategy uh, with immediate lion. The reason for that is that if you actually delete all the bosses turns, you actually forego all attacks that they can do because they can only do any attack when they get a turn. You still of course have to deal with the Lufania orb, but the Lufania orb will increase in counter every time you do dark damage. So pairing a Midnight Lion with a strong dark damage dealer such as Vivi or Zande will work to keep the Lufania Orb at bay. Lastly, uh, using a strong DPS or Brave Shaver will help you get around the Brave Shield when they enter the Fire Dog stance. And remember that they actually need to have a turn in order to use Flame Thrower Plus ability. So if all their turns are deleted, you actually have tons of turns uh, to slowly shave through their brave shield anyway. So, uh, in my opinion, I think by far using Amulet Lion is the most straightforward strategy uh, in this fight. Of course, uh, if you want to go through the regular route, the synergy characters, uh, if you have them, are very strong for this fight. So, again, Chief of Witch is Sunday because he imperils and enchants Dark for your entire party, uh, therefore allowing you to completely bypass the Lufania Orb. Zande also, of course, has very strong brave shaving capabilities when he's fully ramped up, especially when it comes to his uh, EX ability and his LD ability. The interesting thing about the Fire Dog stance is that um, they actually do take increased damage from Elemental Weakness ability which has Zande written all over it so essentially he really helps your entire party break through the shield uh, more quickly. Uh, 
Matrix I mentioned earlier is also very good here uh, because she can of course support your party with her Holy Knight protection so with Beatrix in the party you actually don't have to bother uh, breaking through their brave shields you can just time her Holy Knight protection and eat the flame thrower uh, plus ability it, it will actually do zero damage while her Holy Knight protection buff is up then of course you have Cloud and although Cloud delay will not work when the fire dog stance is up um, Cloud can still help a lot for example he can buy you additional turns by paralyzing uh, the dog before they can do flamethrower plus ability, uh, attack and outside of their fire stance ability his delays will still work and of course he also brings very strong brave shaving capabilities um, in his kit as well so he's a, another character that would work quite well lightning although she's not a synergy character represents a very strong uh, dps uh, for this stage and i've actually used her in my ambient lion run as well lightning notably also can delay the main ochu on the first wave indefinitely just by herself and of course uh, she has the rebreaking uh, strategy or break or rebreaking strategy that uh, can still work to delay the dogs when they are in the uh, fire dog stance. Uh, in terms of party composition, uh, you do first of all want to consider some way, shape, or form to get around the Lufania orb. So you either um, have to look at party members with the dark uh, element at, uh, tied to their kit if not then you have to bring very strong dps with burst mode and diabolo summon uh, but it's it is still quite a tight fight if you don't incorporate some sort of um, dark element attacks in your party next as i mentioned you need to go through uh, and plan for uh, ways to get around the fire dog stance so uh, you need very strong brave shavers in your party so some examples of party composition that you can use first and foremost I would recommend um, this party composition so lightning, VV and Abedit Lion um, and they really can tear through the fight very quickly and Amid Lion really teases through the fight very uh, hard as well. If you are using Amid Lion, I would also recommend to use an, an Amid Lion friend support so that you have additional uh, turn deletion uh, in your kit as well. Secondly, uh, is uh, Gao and Gladio combo. So, Gao and Gladio. Uh, has very strong counter attacks when paired together and both of them has have healing built into their kit as well so Gao and Gladio um, has more than enough healing to handle the hyper aggressive attacks that the bosses on wave 2 can do uh, and of course to round off the party uh, having Zande in will enchant Gladio with Duck as well and Zande and Gladio doing Duck attacks is more than enough to indefinitely pause the Lufania orb. Of course, uh, Gladio also brings in some damage mitigation into his kit, and uh, with um, strong brave shaving abilities such as from Gladio's EX, Gauss LD, and of course Sunday's attacks, uh, you should be able to have some sort of attack that can break through the brave shield uh, as well. Thirdly, I really want to give Elnaj a special mention for this fight. Um, if you actually reset wave 2, you can very quickly get a, a start of wave 2 where one dog targets Elnaj and the other dog is targeting the party. And you can actually indefinitely terror lock the dogs from start to end and they will never get a single action just by using Elnaj. Uh, and I actually have a video on this app as well that you can refer to where I essentially paired Elnaj with uh, Vivi and Zande so Zande helps to uh, 
um, Imperial and Enchant uh, El Nach with Dark. And because both, um, well, yeah, essentially your entire party is doing Dark type attacks, the Vafania Orb isn't an issue as well. Uh, even when they have the Brave Shield up, if they are inflicted with Terror, they still will not be able to use uh, Flame Trover plus ability. So uh, with El Nash in the party, you don't actually actually have to rush to get to break through their brave shields as well. So that's it. Thanks a lot for your kind attention. Hope this video has been helpful and informative. And as always, if you enjoy the video, do leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps a lot. Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.